What's happening? My name is Michael and today I'm going to show you how to put some gap in your crack. My name is Michael and I'm going to show you how to seal your crack. That doesn't sound good either. I'm going to show you how to put some caulk in your crack. I'm going to show you how to seal your void. This isn't going well at all. My name is Michael and today I'm going to show you how to properly seal your expansion joints and cracks using the Rapid Set self-leveling sealant. And I'm going to show you a ton of tips and tricks along the way to make this project go way smoother for you. So let's get right to it and cock something cool. Yeah. So I basically wanted to start this video off by showing you how a lot of people get this project wrong and what better place to do that than my dad's backyard. Sorry dad. One thing my dad did get right though, his 69 GTX 440. <laughs> So as you can see, in this expansion joint, it, the sealant has delaminated, it's shrinking, it's cracking, and it's done this for basically two reasons. One, my dad did what everybody thinks that you should do. Just go ahead and fill the whole crack, no matter how deep it is, with as much as the product as possible, and hope for the best. Well, because he laid the product on so thick, it didn't allow itself to expand and contract the way it's supposed to. Reason number two is because he used a polyurethane based product, which is basically like dinosaur technology. Well, today we're gonna be using the Rapid Set Self Leveling Sealant. This is not a polyurethane base, this is a hybrid saline polyether base which it is much more flexible over time. It will bond to just about any material. It is way more UV resistant and it will bond in damp conditions. And that's a big deal. What that means is that you don't have to wait 24, 48 hours of a dry day to go ahead and apply this material. But this is what we're gonna be doing today. We're going to clean the joint out. We're going to backfill it with either baccarat or sand. And then we're gonna to wanna to stay about a half inch from the surface and fill the rest of it up with a self-leveling sealant. What this is going to do is it's going to prevent air and water from infiltrating the crack, coming underneath your slab and eroding away all the soil underneath, which leads to cracking. And when you're talking about the driveway meeting up the side of the house, what it will also prevent is the water running down your foundation wall and getting into your basement. So let's get started. Now, as I said before, we're going to be working with the 28 ounce self leveling sealant by Rapid Set which, by the way, it comes in the little fellas as well. Not only does it come in gray, but it also comes in sandstone and light gray. Now, if you watch the channel at all, you know that I'm a little bit biased when it comes to Rapid Set, but I will always give you the facts, no matter how clean or dirty, and I will never steer you in the wrong direction. With that being said, this product did get off to a rocky start when it first came out. Since the original formula was designed to be poured and mixed in a, an industrial dispenser, it was never meant to go into a caulk tube, so therefore there were some separation issues. But I assure you that the new formula has been perfected and is completely dialed in. <laughs> this stuff is good. Now, when it comes to cleaning out the expansion joints, do this however you feel necessary, whether it's with a screwdriver, a chisel and hammer, or simply just a leaf blower or an air compressor. For the really messy bits, you might even want to use a wire brush. Just make sure those expansion joints are clean, free of loose debris, and free of paint. You may want to dig down about an inch or so to make room for the backer rod or the sand. Now, like I said, the goal here is we're looking for about a half inch layer of this material at most, no more. And I'm looking at about a one inch to one and a half inch deep crack. This is about $15 a tube. I do not want to waste all this product down deep in the crack where it does not belong or where we do not want it. So we're going to backfill it with something called backer rod. And you want the backer rod to get stuffed down in the crack to where it pinches the backer rod just a little bit. If it's too loose, the backer rod will float up when you place the product down. Now, in a case like this, this particular expansion joint is about 1 8 to a quarter inch too wide. So a hot tip in this situation is I can actually fill it with some all-purpose sand until it's about a half inch from the surface. 
This is great for situations where you have expansion joints that are over three quarters of an inch wide. If they are one inch or more, another great tip, this is pipe insulation. It's got this great design where it's shaped like a C, where you can actually curl it inside of itself and you can make this any size you want pretty much. You can double up on your three quarter inch backer rod, but I find that to be quite the pain in the butt. Now, how do I know that it's a half inch below the surface? Well, I just made myself a nice, simple, very effective tool out of a quarter inch plywood. This is Luan. And I just cut a half inch notch right at the end. That's about, it's about a half inch by half inch. And all I gotta simply do is I just simply scrape the excess sand away. I also use this to push the back around down to make sure that it's a half inch below the surface. Then just brush the excess away. I'm sure you already know how to use a cock gun and how to cut the tips, but I'm gonna show you anyway. With the 28 ounces, you actually unscrew the tip and you're gonna wanna cut this nipple just above the threads. Don't cut the threads off. Screw the tip back on. And here's another tip when it comes to cutting the tip. See what I did there? <laughs> the higher up you cut on the tip, the smaller the hole is gonna be. The lower you cut the tip, the bigger the hole is gonna be. So do your best to try to match the size of the hole with the size of your expansion joint. It'll make things a lot easier. But another really great tip, make sure you start off small and then go bigger. Press down on this little clutch, pull the plunger back, put the cartridge in bottom first, push the plunger in and you're ready to go. Now, if you wanted to terminate one of your expansion joints, in other words, if you want the self-leveling sealant to stop somewhere and there's an exit point, just use the non-sag sealant. It's basically like a caulk on steroids. You can use this for anything a caulk can do and more. I don't use gloves, but you may want to use gloves for this project. It gets a little messy. Also, before you start this project, make sure you have a rag handy in your back pocket ready to go. I promise you won't regret it. When you're in between expansion joints, don't forget to release the pressure. Again, I promise you won't regret it. Pumping out this material is seriously so euphoric. <laughs> Another very important, helpful tip is notice how I am keeping the tip inside the product. This will help to avoid trapping air and getting air bubbles coming up. Now, when you're coming to the end of a run, before you lift up the tube, stop. Release the pressure on the back. Have a rag on you, nice and handy. Roll the tube over until you get rid of that booger, okay? Grab the rag, and then take it away. Now you can move on to your next run. Very handy tip. Uh, a lot of people learn this one the hard way and make a mess all over the driveway. Uh, acetone cleanup, by the way. And that's all there is to it. It's very simple. Now, if you're unsure of your caulking skills and you wanna make sure that you don't make a mess, don't forget that you can use duct tape as a painter's tape. You may even find it helpful to have these two guys on hand. RapidSight also makes a two-part epoxy anchoring and adhesive repair. This one's four hours, this one's five minutes. I like to have these on hand so that I can reconstruct some of those loose pieces that are still existing so that I can reseal the crack or reconstruct the edge. Now this last tip has gotta be my most favorite tip of all. Use all-purpose sand as a camouflage to camouflage those small cracks. Go ahead and lay out your bead in those small cracks and then just pour some all-purpose sand on top and brush it away. You would be amazed at how much that tip is gonna make that crack almost virtually disappear. So how do you take something like this and take it just one step further? I have no idea. But there is something that I have always wanted to try with this stuff. I have always wanted to see if I could use this stuff as a mold making material, so let's give that a shot. <laughs> Thank you. 
I honestly did not think that was going to work. It sucks that you have to wait for about two weeks for it to set up, but I mean, this is not what the material was meant to do, but not bad. But can I pour concrete in it? Well, that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to comment down below and try to talk my dad into letting me borrow the GTX, uh, I wouldn't mind that one bit. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. I promise you won't regret it. And I'll see you in the next video. So this expansion joint was installed. Uh, oh my God, birds. And as you can see, it's delaminated, it's shriveling, it's cracked, it's shri- Are you kidding me?